Hi, welcome to Bot Brack, Box on the Box Rock and Celluloid. So I'm going to do a little rock album review. A little late to the party with this because it came out on April the 7th, but it's the new album by Black Swan. So Black Swan is the super group uh, put together, or it's come together and it goes out through Frontiers Records, the Italian label. So um, Frontiers Records, if you actually I did a review of Treat um, uh, last week, um, uh, Frontiers is an Italian record label the, basically it's the home for um, 80s uh, melodic rock bands and artists uh, who um, you know need to find a home for their music um, and also bands that want to sound like that so to speak um, so a lot of acts have been on there like Whitesnake and Def Leppard have had releases out on there Toto uh, and then heavier stuff like Primal Fear and so on so this is the second uh, release, this is Generation Mine, the first album was Shake the World, which came out at the end of 2019, and so on. So it's quite a strange concept, the super group, I thought I'd just sort of talk about that initially, because Frontiers put together super groups, whereas, you know, my concept of a super group, were original super group, something like Blind Faith, which is Clapton, Steve Winwood and Ginger Bacon, I'm not sure who the bass player was, but those guys were like top guys, you know. Uh, and then later on, recently we had Chicken Foot, you know, had uh, Chad Smith on drums, who's from one of the biggest bands out of the Chili Peppers, Satriani on guitar, massive guitar figure, Michael Anthony on bass, the bass player Van Halen, one of the biggest bands ever, and Sammy Hagar on vocals. So th these are true super groups. And um, what Fr Frontiers puts together, I would say, is a super group in the kind of uh, genre that it deals in. So in this case, we've got two kind of stellar. Uh, hair band era musicians in Red Beach from Winger, uh, White Snake, Latterly, um, and Jeff Pilsen of Docker. Now these guys both had, I think Jeff Pilsen had three platinum albums uh, in America, uh, Dokken, uh, and Jeff Red Beach had two platinum albums. So you've got to get handed to those guys. Robin McCauley's on vocals. Uh, McCauley, yeah, a little more patchy of a career. He was in Grand Prix, then he was in the Far Corporation. Which had that hit with Stairway to Heaven, and then he did Michael Schenker Group or Macaulay Schenker Group, and he kind of got helped Michael get back on track, but they never got big. Um, although I've got a lot of time for those records. Uh, then he's been in Trans Siberian Orchestra, I think, but don't quote me on that, and singing with Schenker again. So he's a known quantity, um, but not in terms of record sales, the level that um, Jeff Pilson and Red Beach were you know, 35 years ago. Then the drummer's a guy called Matt Starr, um, who I wasn't aware of, but he played in Mr. Big when some Pat Torpy got ill. He's done something with Gilby Clark. He's obviously an LA musician. Uh, and he's, he maybe, maybe he knows Jeff Pilson, I'm not sure. Um, Cause I think um, Jeff Pilson's LA based, that's his Macaulay. Not sure about Red Beach. So that's basically the setup. Um, Frontiers have got other projects like this, one with Brad Gillis and Billy Shin at the moment called Skills, which, uh, when I've listened to it, I've really not been into it. Um, and then you've got on the Inside Out label and band like Sons of Apollo, uh, where you've got Portnoy and Sheen, who are two you know massive, massive guys. Sherinian, kind of top keyboard player, but kind of second level, I suppose, even not not playing, obviously. Then you've got Jeff Scott So as well known uh, melodic rock, obviously on Through the Frontiers label as well. Um, and then Bumblefoot, Ron Fowle, obviously great guitar player, but no more in guitar circles. So again, it's just that concept of what is a super group, you know. Uh, another one Frontiers have put together recently has Nathan James on vocals from Inglorious. Um, uh, you got Michael Sweet from Striper, Joe Holkstra, Marco Mendoza, and Tommy Aldridge. So it's kind of White Snake members and a guy who sounds like Coverdale or Can Do, and then the guy from Striper. So again, you know, pedigree musicians, but not like um, you know uh, the kind of super group level we're talking about when I went back to like Chicken Foot or Blind Faith. Okay, so I've waffled about the concept of the Super Group. I should say that one of the problems with Frontiers is they put out an awful lot of material. They put out a massive amount of content. Um, they seem to be taking a kind of pound shop approach. I don't mean that derogatory because there's a lot of really good quality stuff, but they seem to be putting out a lot of stuff. You know, it's high quantity and then they're probably getting lower returns because of streaming and uh, going up and sales going down. People are recording at home more, I'm guessing, and Frontiers, 
you know, they're just changing their, their model. So this album's produced by Jeff Pilsen at his home studio and it's mixed by Alessandro Del Vecchio, I think I pronounce it, who's kind of um, Frontier's in-house producer and writer. So he writes stuff and produces Revolution Saints and things like that. Um, so what I should say, it's a great sounding record. The first record sounded really good and this sounds even better. I think Jeff Pilsen's like a really good producer engineer now. Um, uh, the end machine arm sound good that he's doing. He's getting a lovely clank on his bass. The drum sounds really good, you know, not too bombastic, but natural. Red Beach, of course, sounds great. And Ron McCauley will come in in a sec, sounding good. Um, so what's this album like? So the first album I thought was good. Um, I thought it was kind of six, probably a seven out of ten. When I first heard the tracks off the album, the first time I was like, oh, I might get this. But after listening a few times, I was, I, I was undecided. I may come back to it. I kind of feel the same way about this, um, about buying a physical copy. I've just been listening online. But um, I think this is a really strong record. I don't think it dips below a certain level. Um, it opens with a short instrumental called Before the Light, which is just a nice little kind of red beach thing. Uh, and then it goes into She Hides Behind, which is a really catchy sort of pumped up rocker um, with some sort of stupid lyrics. To a certain extent, um, uh, carburetor, re, 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 yeah, he uses carbur we say carburetor in America, in Britain, but he says carburetor, and McCabe McCullough is using the American spelling. Uh, so it's quite a funny rhyme in that, but it's a catchy song, and it, it really sets out the band's stall. It's basically in tradition of sort of up-tempo, more than the winger style. Um, uh, it's really crisp production, it's got balls, but it's in that 80s style. Um, and then you've got the title track next, which is Generation Mind. Again, both these tracks are 447, 427. They're, they're tightly arranged. Um, again, good song, really solid. And then you've got Eagles Fly. This is a little more interesting. It's kind of got a groovy riff. Um, and it's got quite a nice pre-solo bit where he goes on about some laser beams, which is a bit of a cheesy lyric, but again, laser beams, you know. It harmonises well. It's, it's a good section, and that reappears at the end of the song. Um... You know, everything's present and correct on this. Uh, the drums, like uh, Matt Starr, I haven't come across him before. But what I describe him is just a really solid rock drum. He's clearly very studio experienced. You can hear his play for the song. He's tight, he's got a really good feel. He obviously knows what he's doing and obviously has a really good reputation. And that's why he's in this and he's, he's excellent. Jeff Pearlson, great backing vocals, great production. Jeff doesn't play really complicated bass lines, but he's got a great sound, he's really tight. Uh, and that's why he's in Foreigner, that's why he's in Dokken, excellent. Red Beach, he's still bringing it for me. I think some people have uh, I read in comments were like kind of disappointed with Reb solos on this, but Reb always achieves a certain standard, yet yeah, sometimes he's not you know, hitting the highs of heading for a heartbreak or those great winger solos, but you know, a lot of older players can disappoint sometimes, and Reb doesn't, he, he's, he's still creative, he's still on it. I think, I think there's still a hunger there because Although he's been in a, a big band for a little period with Winger, he's probably not had the sort of giant, you know, ro rolling success that a big stadium band will have. So, you know, he's not got lazy. He's had to stay up on his chops. Uh, and then that brings to Robin McCauley. Now, Robin McCauley is always a singer of light, but I really think he's gone up a notch on this. Um, I actually saw him live uh, a few years ago with Michael Schenk Schenker's... Uh, not a Temple of Rock, Michael Schenker Fest, where he has the four different singers. And what was interesting about it, I mean, the Rob McCauley era, you know, he only got one song of his McCauley era, it was Bad Boys, off of the Save Yourself album. And then he just did UFO covers, but he was by far the best singer. I mean, Gary Barden, uh, was long past it, in all, all truth. Uh, Doogie White's good, solid, like Doogie. Graham Bonnet does incredibly well for his age, but McCauley is actually nearly as old as Graham Bonnet. Um, but... Oh, Graham Bond is 75 this year, I think McCauley's 69. But um, he just hasn't lost anything. And the, the only thing I can think of, he's taken really good care of his voice. Um, he's a fit guy. But also, I don't think he had that like, heavy touring schedule in the 80s. You know, when he was in the Michael Schenker group, they, they did mainly sort of opening slots on arena tours. I think they supported White Snake and other stuff. And I think he would have had periods where his, his voice had been given a break. And I think that's benefited him. But I think he really suits this. It's like, this is music, you know, Schenker, Macaulay Schenker was kind of more AOR. Um, and he's sitting in with this kind of dock and winger hybrid sound really well. Um, I, I think his vocals are great. Um, I'm cute. I was hugely impressed on the, the, the first album and this. It continues apparently. Um, he loves the way Jeff Pilson kind of mics him up and gets his vocal sounding and he... 
he says he's never sounded better than when he's in Jeff Pilson's studio. So it's fantastic. Um, next track, so I've waffled there, but um, track five is See You Cry. This is 438. This is really catchy. It's kind of quite cock rock. Um, quite a dirty riff uh, from Reb, but um, a good arrangement again. Uh, and I really like this track. Then you've got perhaps the first kind of filler track, but I think it's as a strength for the album that it's still a good sign. It's Killer on the Loose, not the Finn Lizzie one. Interestingly enough, it's the only track under four minutes. It's three minutes 26. So this track benefits from that outstaying its welcome. Um, but it's, it's got a catchy chorus. Uh, that is a criticism of the album. The first album, they've done better on this one. The first album was 55 minutes long, 11 tracks. This album's got the little instrumental. Uh, and it's also 55 minutes, so the range is a little tighter. But I do feel it could lop 30 seconds a minute off quite a few of the tracks. There's quite a lot of extended outros. Then you've got Miracle, which is single again. Uh, melodic, um, good riffing, uh, good hook. Um, and then you've got How Do You Feel, which is 539. This is more sort of a slower pace kind of ballad type. Um, good, good hook on the chorus. Um, uh, nice kind of progression, sort of a bit like Under One Condition by Winger, that sort of uh, what mixolean flat six sort of modulation. If you know your kind of music theory, you know, go playing like a major, like an E major going to C major type of thing. Um, uh, and then you got Long Way Down. Initially, I like this track more, it's up tempo, but it's kind of more a six out of ten track now, but again, it's got a lot of energy. Um, uh, it's 522, yeah, it could, could do a bit of trimming. Uh, and then it finishes really strongly on, you've got Crown, so this track has got a classic Red Beach riff, kind of recalls Emergency a bit off the uh, Winger debut, um, but it's got a really nice groove, uh, and the other track it recalls, if you remember the Dock and Dysfunctional album from 95, is a track called Lesser of Two Evils on that, and the groove and the chorus and the harmonies and the, uh, the modal, um, modal sound of the uh, chorus Reminds me of that, um, and it's a track I really like. Um, guitar's cool, really good. Then the next track brings back a kind of galloping riff that we recalls one of the great Dock and tracks, Kiss of Death. So, you know, they're obviously, you know, forget we forget as well that Dick Red Peach, Beach has played in Dock and did very well. He made a very good album with Razor Slate. Um, some good records worth checking out, um, and he's played all those classic Dock and tracks. So, yeah, they're not ashamed to bring out an obvious gallop. I really like this track. I really like um, the lyrics on this, the Wicked the Days, interesting phrase. Um, uh, it's got that classic gallop. Um, it's got this energy, really good. 517, but it works. And then it finishes with I Will Follow, which is a nice finishing track. It's got a really nice, um, clean part track with some kind of acoustic. Um, uh, and um, again some really good lead lines from Beach he does some nice harmony lead on the album and I, th I think that's the thing with the album there's a lot of um, layering gone in there's good backing vocals Jeff Pilson so I'm singing some nice counter lines there's extra little guitar parts a lot of thoughts gone into the album I mean I'm quite amazed I mean I guess you know the pandemic you know they've had time on their hands but I am always impressed by these bands how they kind of uh, get his albums out, you know, in two years. We've come up with this, and I imagine Red Beach is probably working on Winger stuff, and Jeff Pilson might have been stuff with Foreigner. Rob McCall, he's, you know, probably been out with Schenk or something. I know he's doing some dates soon, because um, Ronnie Romero can't do it. But yeah, so that's the Generation Mind. I think uh, I'll give it an 8 out of 10, um, you know, on a, a lesser day. You know, I wouldn't see it be going below 7, 7.5. So makes, I think it builds on the first album, and I think... I think these albums, these Black Swan albums, are well worth getting. Uh, and I think, I haven't got them yet, but I will do. Um, I also think it's worth them kind of maybe, hopefully, trying to turn, do this kind of more, rather than a project, do it properly as a band. So I generally think there's chemistry here. It's it's got a, a, It's got a good band vibe, this. It doesn't feel like it's a bunch of musicians just coming together for a studio project. Um, just finally, incidentally, the first project I ever fin Frontiers did was The Mob, and that was Red Beach was on that, and that was Doug Pinnock, Red Beach, and Kelly Key giving Night Ranger. Um, to me, that just didn't work. Um, uh, it's just my opinion. A lot of people liked it. That's a long time ago, but um, you'll see more of these from, t from Frontiers, and like I say, they're putting out stuff all the time, but Black Swan is one of the highlights recently, so check it out. So hopefully see you again soon. Remember to share and subscribe, and thanks very much for checking out.